is actually 2015 that Marty went to in the film. So how cool was that? We're here now in 2015. And we're talking about an eagle and how it flies. And basically, we're going to talk about scleral lenses. I mean, Pat, the god that is Pat Carline. And, and I built this particular talk to sort of give Anu and his company a huge big up in terms of the, 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 the machine and what it's going to tell us, etc. But you start talking to people that don't know anything about it. And now I've got a room full of utter, dedicated, must be getting up at this time in the morning, experts. So uh, I bow to your greater knowledge in many areas, but I'm going to put my rubbish on and see what happens. So we're talking about scleral lenses because to me it is back to the future. I mean, I started with these way back when, a long time ago. And we've been through this whole range of different lenses. But of course, the beauty of the scleral topographer is, as Pat just said, it isn't just telling us about scleral lenses, it's telling us about any lens design from a manufacturing point of view and also from a practitioner point of view. So I now already have a patient in mind, having heard Pat just speak, that I'm thinking that's why that little bloody lens doesn't stay in the right place. I mean, we go back to the beginnings. And, and do you know one of the really, really sad things about this? whole process of sclerals coming to the fore is we now all have to admit Ken Pullen was right. <laughs> Ken. <laughs> Ken. Uh, uh, it's the first time I've said that. Uh, <laughs> seriously. The first time I've said that and we've been in the room. So uh, all these years banging on about sclerals that we didn't believe in but now we have to say what a god he is. The other thing is of course we have Patting here, so I thought well, I'd let him do some of the work. Why not? Well, uh, thank you everyone for uh, taking the time out of your practice to be here tonight. Uh, I think you're going to find this really kind of enjoyable, actually. Uh, we've got uh, some new thoughts about uh, scleral contact lenses, how they fit into the practice, and how we're going to be utilizing them in practice. You know, today all of us in clinical practice are faced with a wide range of corneal topographies that we need to manage somehow with rigid contact lenses. And today, when a patient sits down in front of you with an irregular cornea, we actually have three good clinical options for them. Number one is our standard go-to lens, and that's always going to be a large diameter corneal contact lens. We also have in the category of rigid lenses, hybrid lenses or piggyback lens designs. And then today we have this new scleral lens design that is again a viable option to uh, entertain for the patient. Now the major question is when do I use which uh, and uh, and how do I go about doing it? So, how do we go about doing it? Well, first of all, you buy a scleral topographer. You get much more information through. Thank you, Pat, for your little interaction there. You're you know, welcome. Having him twice in the room. And you see, the pennies dropped for all of you guys a long time ago because you're so knowledgeable about things. But ultimately, it took a long time for the pennies to drop and for us to realize that maybe the sclera wasn't the same as the cornea. It was just Pat. So we bring in Arnu in his eagle costume, etc. about ESP. Oh, so I'm going to go back to that. Very important. Okay. A groundbreaking technology company is changing the future of eye care. Superior comfort is now possible for all types of contact lenses with the help of the most advanced and comprehensive eye topographer. 
Our revolutionary device has the ability to capture twice the surface of the eye compared to traditional devices. Measuring almost the whole front surface of the eye and generating more than 350,000 measurement points. It directly measures height data to produce highly accurate 3D images. Making contact lens fitting faster, easier and more precise than ever before. This is the Eye Surface Profiler from Eaglet Eye. Cool video, huh? It's just sort of really futuristic, which is what this machine is. For more well, information, visit eaglet-i.com. Go there. Um, and that sort of video production, the stuff I used last night, etc., was done by a fantastic video production company. Uh, Jimmy and Aaron here are representing that company at the back here. They're the ugly ones standing up. Look like rock stars, but they're not really. And um, I am very happy that if any of you ever want anything for your practices or businesses done in that, I'm going to promote because the company's run by my son and started by my son, so it has to be done. <laughs> so we know about Eagle Eye, those that don't. Actually, who's got one? Okay, who wants one? Yeah, but it's not free, so <laughs> this is where it's going to go. This is where we have to go in here. But you see, this, we can make a business model that makes it work. Um, we don't need to sort of go on the details because Arlene's going to be able to do that on stand a lot better. So I think absolutely 100% go and get your own done. Go and get your own measurements taken. It is, as Pat, Pat says, a way to go right out to the periphery and get information and data that we can use in practice to fit a lens. We can use in practice to understand why a lens doesn't fit. And we can use in industry or in uh, design work for the lenses. Uh, so Eagle Eye, to me, is important because... Well, it just is. I am really proud to be possibly one of the first, certainly, practitioners in day-to-day -day optometric use of the ESP. And I was quite keen to get this equipment into the practice so I got an opportunity to use it on my patients for their benefit and for my benefit as well. The advantage of the eye surface profiler is it's available to profile the surface of every single type of eye. So I'm getting more information from normal eyes and I'm getting information that was totally unavailable from the central corneal areas of eyes that are challenged and adding that in to the equation of where we are with the scleral information for fitting more complex lenses. Now the sclera increasingly is becoming important because there are more and more scleral lenses being fitted. So we need to know the nuances of fit, the small shape changes that may be, the differences between the temporal and the nasal section of the sclera and what might happen superior and inferiorly. The SP has helped me understand each patient better. The ESP will, in time, when it totally links in to eye surface designs of lenses. So if we could go from profile to design, that would be amazing. And commercially, that means my chair time's reduced, my understanding of the patient, my first choice of lens is all more efficient. And so commercially, it's better. All of the contact lens fittings that I've done historically have been involved in really to a degree an element of guesswork. So what we can now do is take hold of the image of the profile before we fit the lens. So it helps us immediately target the most efficient fit. So where historically I might have had to take two or three actual inserted trial lenses, I'm now aiming much more rapidly and more quickly so I can effectively get a more precise, instant, first trial lens. It is part of my um, standard management of a new patient now. Obviously, um, being so happy with the eye surface profiler at the moment, I think it's absolutely something which may well become industry standard. Now I know I can measure up to 20 millimeters. I don't want to go back. So will it be the future? Of course it will. More detail? Absolutely. More information? Completely and utterly. So I think that um, it will become the future if it isn't already. Obviously, being a new product, Eagle Eye are very keen to help. In terms of customer support, 
of course, they're superb and uh, they're always available when I need them. Yeah, company, great company to work with and great company to deal with. I just love that because it saves my voice because those of us shouting come together last night were there. See, the photo knowledge of a lot of practitioners isn't 100%, but I, I do have an elite audience here. Patients don't know much. This is your brain size. It's fully expected. The ones that didn't bother to come this morning are not quite so uh, knowledgeable, and so they're missing out. So please get your Twitter accounts going, get your Facebook pages saying, we're at Eaglet Eye, we're having fun, we're learning. Well, you will do when the others come on. This is just me being silly. But at the end of the day, get it out there and broadcast it. I only wants that free marketing. And that knowledge is so useful. Now, what I like about my current job, why am I still going after 40 years, is that we're technologically really privileged to have such an amount of white things going on. And they're all ographies. I was trying to think of a few other ographies. Well, you know me and my food, it's got to be good. Um, it isn't quite yet announced, but I have a feeling that my presidential address will be around the recipe for contact lens success. So we can build on that. So foodography, why not a bit of Brianography? I've been on the stage a lot lately. But there's also that other ography every one of you has thought of, but didn't dare mention. Now, how could I possibly bring an image of pornography? Well, it has eye-related stuff. I'm not quite sure why eye licking is considered to be some sort of pleasure, but there you go. Maybe they'll change the topography by, you know, tongue pressure. My practice is varied. Um, do you know the main reason? I do as many things as I can so I don't get bored. Otherwise I wouldn't be happy with where things are. We're very lucky to have the latest in cutting edge technology. We have OCT, optical coherence tomography, which is a 3D viewer that gives us um, a number of different ways of looking at the back and the front of the eye, looking for conditions like uh, glaucoma, uh, macular degeneration, anything else that can be going on there. We also have Daytona, which uh, gives us a view of up to 200 degrees on the back of the eye, and then a number of other cutting edge uh, technologies like corneal topographers um, and, and different bits like yeah, so we've got all the fun stuff. Another cracking video by Creative Example. So I've got to love technology generally. It is one of my sort of favorite things to have. And, you know, I think the nice thing about it is that my late partner actually started the whole technology thing and we've all moved through many, many, many years. That's my old um, ophthalmometer. It literally, I was working with it until 86 or thereabouts. I realized maybe it wasn't safe because the plug was made of wood. There was something not quite ideal about it. But actually, astoundingly, it was accurate. We moved up through a variety of technologies and now try and have a really high-tech practice generally. Um, so much so that we have to employ a technician who does it all because it's not my job to take these images. That's the beauty of it. This is such a simple instrument to utilize that you don't need to do it yourself. That's wasting your clinical time. You're putting yourself into the area of um, diagnosis. So, you could almost be at home with a beer and they could just email the images to you and you could diagnose them there. That's the sort of way I'm going to move. I think Ian's thinking in the same route and uh, it's very much a future thought that, hey, why go into practice when you can sit at home in the sunshine? Um, just working through different technologies, we all know these and love them. OCT, hard to go without. Um, the new swept source gives us a whole bunch of information that's going on with details on the sclera, but you saw that yesterday in the talks. Now, I can't remember what's next. It's not going anywhere. Uh, oh, I can't remember what that was. It doesn't really matter. So we're sort of introducing now the eye surface profiler as an instrument. How many bits of kit are there? Just one down here on the carton stand. Yeah, yeah. well, it's, it's right here now. Yeah, sure. So this is just running through the technologies for everything. But we had a, uh, a a panel yesterday with Sarah and Ian who sat in the audience here and one of the big things that's come out all the time is this education of the patient. It's so crucial because one of the things that struck me after using the eye surface pro profile on a patient that Arnie knows because her eyes are so challenged that she wondered why her scleral lens protruded so much and it wasn't until I gave her the 3D model on the eye surface profiler and moved it around about her eye shape 
that she said, oh my God, now I realise why I have to wear lenses like that. She hadn't been able to conceive in her own mind or visualise exactly why her eye. So I educated her. Now she is one of our best advocates. So our marketing is all free from our patients because they're being uh, taken through. And as I said earlier, it's, it's really crucial that we use our um, social medias and our advertising and all other factors and get our patients to do it for us. So get those um, images, uh, uh, get the permissions. Just, they're artistic, having that wonderful coloured profile out on something. Just pop it up onto social media. Use it in blogs and Twitter feeds and everything else. Why do we photograph dead simple, dead easy? I used the same slides yesterday in uh, an OCT talk. And ultimately, these are the elements of what we should be doing now. It is best current practice. And, you know, we are all there now in the forefront of leading edge technologies. <laughs> so how do we advise technology? How do we sell it? Well, it's dead simple. It's an easy thing. I frequently say that unless I have more information on you, unless I'm fully informed and everything is diagnosed, then I don't sleep easily at night, quite straightforwardly. Expertise like you have, and you have with your equipment and things, makes people ultimately pour into the practice because our practice patients are our lifeblood. Actually, let's say even down to basics, our practice patients are our money. That's a constant revenue stream coming in. So the tips on the profiler, let's take it through again. Contrast is king. Basically we want to have as much fluorescein with as much shininess, so loads and loads of lubrication, get that fluorescein in there. Because the size of the tear film matters, the moisture of the tear film matters, and the thickness of the tear film matters. And apparently length matters as well. Now the two dots are aligned fairly simplistically. I know will give you a, 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 an easy go downstairs. Uh, if you go and have a play on the machine, just pop those dots together and get them working happily. You need really wide eyes from the patient. And I frequently actually have a tech in with me so that rather than the patient do it, uh, because it's sort of not always the best, we can efficiently do it. And sometimes if my optometry colleague is free, she's the best at opening the eyes up to get the biggest, widest eye. So we want wide eyes so that you get the best view, fully moist so that we know that they're happy. Um, and that's where the tech comes into the whole process. Um, but be quick as well, because once that fluorescein's in, the tear film will degrade. Of course, you've widened up the eye, and we know evaporative dry eye is one of the biggest issues. Uh, this guy might not be uh, so easy to do. This girl, probably nice and challenging. It'd be really interesting to capture how wide you could go with one of those. How cool would that be? Pop your eye out, dear, while we just get on with this. So, eaglet eye effectively is going where? No man has gone before. And yet it does look like the Starship Enterprise. Come on, let's get real. It is really something Star Trekian. More distinct analysis of anything from a graft. You know, and if you just took out all the data, I'm going to be honest, you guys have got more maths knowledge than I'll ever have. And I just like the pretty pictures. They just say something in my mind that helps me understand things better. But the patient who I showed this to also realise that the stitches aren't just there under, they're actually re-changing the profile of the graft. There it is in situ, I love that in-eye functionality that's on there. So it allows you to really put it into perspective. And again, see, we have trained eyes, we know how to look at an image like this. Patients don't, but if we're educating and entertaining them, if we're giving them a fun session about their really rubbish eye, then this is a real help. So we have a greater understanding of normal, like Pat said. We have therefore successful sclerals. This is this poor girl who has zero vision without sclerals. So it is a sight for those sore eyes and gives us brilliant understanding. So is it simple? I just this, we've stuck this in because we're using slurs for dry eye management, um, as everybody has been saying over the weekend. But I picked this Im image up off the internet because it looks like a forest. 
How cool is that? It's blood vessels, but nevertheless, if you look at it carefully, it's like trees. So we have a modern duty of care to be as good as we can. And I really do think, thanks to Arno and his team and all the other guys and the real boffins and brains behind it, the ESP really has landed. going to tell you later they're going to tell you how good this machine is and how you cannot possibly do without it so thank you guys uh...